Tonight, I'm in Dublin for the largest anti-immigration march I've ever seen. It's May 7th, and this is The Ezra Levant Show. Shame on you, you censorious bug. I'm standing on the street next to the river that courses through Dublin, Ireland. This majestic building behind me was the center of the largest anti-immigration march I've ever seen. I want to take you through some of the interesting things we saw today, the interesting places that we went, the interesting people we spoke to. At least I think they're interesting. And we're going to put this show outside the paywall because it was crowdfunded in part by viewers who wanted to see what was going on because they knew the mainstream media would not cover it. If you want to go to that website, it's called migrantreports.com. You can chip in a few quid, or here they use euros. So for the course of the next half hour, enjoy what we saw today in Ireland. Well, we're starting to march. I uh, had an interview cut short a little bit because I was holding things up. Newtown Mount Kennedy is that small town I was referring to of about 2,800 people. When the citizens tried to block it, the Gardai, which is the name of the Irish police, came on heavy with pepper spray. We were talking to a mum who said her daughter was brutally sprayed. Are you from Newtown Mount Kennedy? What's your name? My name is Teresa Murphy. And Newtown Mount Kennedy, a town of about 20, 2,800 souls? Yes, people. And, and, and tell me, uh, what's the latest there? I heard that there was quite a showdown the other day. My daughter that's standing here to the right of me, she was in the protest. And I was always one for never wanting mobile phones in your face. She'd got sprayed. Pepper sprayed? Pepper sprayed. By the police? By the guardie. And she was in the tent trying to, somebody was trying to clean her eyes and her husband. She had to, a good Samaritan came and took her through the back of the tent. They kicked over the fire, the guardie kicked over the fire. And her and her husband, and I'm not saying this like for a sensation I don't know about social media they had to run for their lives my father when he was when I was a little girl told me about the black and tans I never thought what's the black and the tans black and tans were men that were took out of prisons in England to come to Ireland to fight the Irish and they, they were they were bad people and they would go, my father's mother had a small farm. They went to that farm and they could take the poultry, they could take the eggs, take the milk. They didn't have to answer to anybody. And you're comparing that to the guard eye? Oh, well, these ones that were in, these. So what's the latest? Yeah. So what's the latest? Do they still plan to proceed in Newtown, Mount Kennedy? Do we still... Do, do the, the government plans oh, yes, for there, the migrants? there is people in there now at the minute. So, despite and the public reaction... I would there... like to say, if I could now, I, I would, and this is from a mother and grandmother, what are the government going to do for the people who are suffering with pro, pro, post-traumatic stress? It's very interesting to me to hear the chants and the slogans. Let me tell you what I mean. Irish lives matter. That's a riff on the American Black Lives Matter. Do you hear this chant? Whose streets? Our streets. 
That's a typical labor organizing chant that's being co-opted by these people too. It's very interesting to, to me to see the classism. We met a, a soldier today who said that this is about class as much as anything else. And I believe it. Ireland's an interesting place. Of course, it's a place of rebellion. It's a place not uh, long ago, the troubles. These people are used to conflagrations. And that fighting spirit, you hear now a, a football chant, a soccer chant. It's an interesting amalgam of citizens. There is a class element here. You have the elite Davos class, the millionaire class, the jet set class, the UN class, and then you have the working class. Interesting to me, whose side is whom? What, one more piece of the puzzle, and I talked to that one gentleman about it is, so what party is gonna do anything about this? Back home in Canada, for a generation, there has been a uni party on the issue of immigration. The Conservatives opened the doors just as much as the Liberals did. You could say it's similar in other countries like the United Kingdom. I think that there is perhaps a populist movement in Europe that has finally come to Ireland that's saying enough. <laughs> How are you, mate? Ezra Levant from Rebel News in Canada. What's your name? Brian Garrigan, representing the Irish people and all good people all over the world. This is a peaceful protest. We're concerned citizens, concerned fathers and mothers about undocumented men coming into our country. Yes, Ireland has to help genuine refugees, and we do. But we, we need to vet them. We don't know what's coming into our country, and we need to look after our own. And remember, the Irish men all over the world, everywhere in Bilton, but the thing is, we went and we slept on couches. We got digs, we got jobs, we paid our way, we paid our own healthcare. We got nothing for free. But we are for genuine, genuine refugees. This is not an anti-refugee protest. And uh, are you from Newtown, Mount Kennedy? Where are you from? Dublin. And, and what's going on in some of the smaller places like Newtown, Mount Kennedy? They're, they're getting planted with people who are undocumented in a, such a small town. Kulok, we believe, is going to get between 1,000 to 1,500 undocumented men. There's enough problems in Kulok with drugs and with unemployment. We don't need to house, we don't need to house third world people who don't belong here. There's no direct flight from here to Nigeria or from here to Pakistan. Let me ask you two more questions. Um, the, the mainstream media denounces uh, people here as far right or racist. What's your response to the mainstream media? Just because you stand up with a flag or you say you're concerned citizen, straight away you're far right. So I have nothing to say to the main media because they're never here. They won't listen to us. But we're here, we're here on a peace, as a peaceful protest as concerned parents. Remember, we have we have people like uh, Paul McGrath, Phil Lynn who claim Irishhood, Muhammad Ali who claims Irishhood. We're not anti anyone. We just want to look after our own people and house our own force. That's all. Let me ask you, do you think anything will change? Because I'm an outsider, but it seems to me well, that all the parties in Ireland are for open borders immigration. Okay. Do you think that will change? In June of, this, of, ne of next month, there's new local elections all over Ireland, OK? So I'm running in the Dublin inner sea, vote number one, Brian Garrigan, and we're going to make a change. We're slowly waking the people up. 85% of people's concerns are about Ill illegal immigration. And remember, we have to help genuine immigrants. Genuine. Nice to meet you. Thanks for your time. I don't know what will become of this, but there's energy here and there's anger. There's a, to use an analogy, the parade is walking. Which politician will come in front of it to lead it now that it's already going? We'll find out, perhaps. Thank you. 
I didn't understand what was going on. All of a sudden, the protest went silent as a mouse and everyone stopped. The reason was this was a place where, if I'm not mistaken, a young child was stabbed. If it's the incident I'm thinking about, three young children. Tell me the details. Three young children coming out of a crash along with their care worker were attacked by an Algerian migrant. But that was just in the last few months, wasn't it? In January. Of this and is that what led to some of the riots? Well, sorry, it was last. When did that happen, Gavin? Um, so three so kids were stabbed. The, the so-called riots. So, got it. I, I, I'm just describing them bluntly. I, so that was where it happened, which is why there was a moment of silence. What's your name? Malachi Stainson. And are you from Dublin? I am, yes. I'm one of the key people involved. In now, I, I was uh, just asking myself the question, what comes from this? There's plenty of Irish who are upset by this, but where's the political party that well, would... There are no political parties that support our position. Well, what... Well, Some of them are shifting to our position. Like, like which like, ones? There will be a number of independents standing in the European and local elections right across this country. There are political parties like IFP and National Party who support us. The mainstream political parties are totally out of touch with the ordinary people in this country. That was shown very clearly in the two most recent referendums. The European and local elections on the 7th of June here are a referendum on immigration. Well, isn't that, isn't that interesting? Because you actually had a, a referendum recently and the ruling class got smashed. I'm talking about the motherhood referendum and the care referendum. And it was a rejection by the people of woke liberalism. And it was, in fact, a referendum on immigration. Now, I understand that the new prime minister actually comes from the county in which Newtown Mount Kennedy is. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, what's his view on it? Well, he fully supports open borders. He fully supports the destruction of our state. He has been somebody who's been in political office for the past 12 or 13 years. He's somebody who never had a real job in his life. I got one last question for you. I think there's more Irish people around the world than there are in Ireland, including the President of the United States. Um, what, what does the Irish diaspora have an opinion on mass immigration? I think Ireland's being transformed. It's, to be well, frank, it's... There are people who are abroad, many who are forced to go abroad by the same parties who are still in government because of economic necessity, fully support us. And when they come back here on holidays, for instance, from the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, they see the destruction of our country. And they see it's not the country that they left, and it's a country in a far worse state. Thanks for talking with me today. Nice to help you with your expenses. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. What's your name? Joe. Joe, good Joe. to meet you. Are you from Dublin? No. No? I'm the country. Thank you. For what, which county? Bill Kenny, well, it's nice to meet you and thank you for your support. You see the sign that says Kulak says no. That's the neighborhood where we were, where that old paint warehouse is being proposed for a new migrant residence. Kulak, Newtown, Mount Kennedy, those are two of the flashpoints in the migration battle, and they're right at the front. This is a very interesting place. I'm getting a vibe uh, that I have in the UK with Tommy Robinson. And what I mean by that is working class people who have been left out by the system. I don't know enough about Ireland to make the comparison strongly, but the word class comes to mind. I think that these people are not politically cool. They're not the kind of people that the former Prime Minister Leo Varadkar would pose for in a photo. These are people who are the bedrock of Ireland, who have been ignored in Ireland, and who are speaking out for Ireland. Will anyone listen is the question. Where are you? Hi, what's this? Uh, we're part of a newly formed party called the Irish People. We're set up for independence. I'm, my name is Andy Heesman, and I'm running in the Europeans across Dublin, and I'm running in the locals in, in Dublin and, um, oh, sorry, Blanchardstown and Mulhuddard. So what's, the, so what's the platform of your party? The platform? Yeah, what do you stand for? Oh, we stand for no open borders, education, not indoctrination. We want to stand up for the farmers in Ireland. And also my main mission 
uh, and running into Europeans is getting us out of Europe. And so it's, a, it's like Brexit, but for Ireland. Yeah, we want to invoke Article 50 just like the British did and get out of Europe. And we want that to resound all over Europe because Europe has failed us. Yeah, we just got in this morning. Fantastic. I love the work you did in Davos. Oh, thank uh, you so much. Holding their feet to the fire. They don't like it very much when you uh, point the camera at them and ask them questions that... Uh, they're not used to. They're used to softball questions. Yeah, or or yeah, questions that are scripted. Um, and uh, but this is a very interesting event. I see you're with the Irish oh, People the Irish Party. Irish people, you just spoke to Andy. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, are you running as a candidate too? Yeah, running it for the locals and for the Europeans as well. And there is a there's a change out there. I'm sure we are, it's, it's all over the world. It's just, just not not just an Irish uh, phenomenon. It's happening in America. It's happening everywhere. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to ask you, I see a lot of cameras like yeah. ours, yeah. basically a cell phone on a fancy stick. Right. How is the independent media scene in Ireland? Well, I think we're growing more powerful now, and um, the mainstream media is losing a lot of ground because of this reason. There's a lot of stories that people want to hear and that they're being... Um, they're being kind of pushed aside by the mainstream media. For example, there was a 12-year-old boy raped by a Ukrainian in Cork just the other day. And um, it, it's absolutely... These crimes in Ireland, we've never had these things happen. We had babies stabbed in Dublin. Have you heard about that? As yeah, well? we, we heard. And that's where we stopped there, okay, right? Yeah. The damage in this country with uh, cultural Marxism, the, the damage is unreal. Right, it's, it's Islamic fascism is becoming very, very strong now in our society. And the, the Irish people are very naive to the fact that they don't even understand it. It's one of those things, it's a real problem, you know. And uh, we really, the, the Irish people have to take a stand. Because if they don't, by the end of this year, we're going to be in very, very yeah. serious problems. Behind me, the counter protesters. A line of guard eye, that's what they call their police. You can see that they're quite worried about the two sides coming into contact. There's one guard eye officer filming things, I think, for souvenir purposes. I think the numbers on the other side, if I had to estimate, I'd say there's about 110 people. Nah, more like, I'd say, on, uh, shy of 100. I'd say there's about 90 people. There's more police than counter-protesters. Most of the signs on the other side are prefabricated signs, as opposed to many of the homemade signs on this side. And I'll tell you one other thing I just noticed. On this side, hundreds of Irish flags. On that side, I don't see a single Irish flag. I see three Palestinian flags, and I see a mysterious flag that I cannot identify, but there's not a single Irish flag on the other side. And doesn't that tell you something? I'm going to step a, about a, a foot away from these big cops because I don't need to get caught in the crossfire. NGO scope! NGO scope! NGO scope! NGO scum! They're chanting NGO scum. That's a very interesting thing to say. The people in this anti-migration march think that their opponents are the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, NGOs, as much as any domestic political party. And I think they're right. How do you do? Thank you very much. Very friendly here, lots of Rebel News fans, even here in Ireland. I correct myself, I see a single Irish flag on the other side, on which is written Black Lives Matter. As I mentioned before, this side has co-opted the phrase and says, Irish lives matter. I think both lives matter. Free tampons for men. 
You must know Justin Trudeau. I do. <laughs> I was I was going to join them motherfuckers over there, but I says I go with the fucking same people, and that's not saying much for me. So, about the these lunatics over there. Oh, oh fucking hell! How you doing? Who's this rebel? <laughs> We're from Canada, but I I couldn't help but, I couldn't help but come up to you because I just thought that is real life in Canada. <laughs> Probably is, is it? They really do have that in military bases in Canada. I give, for up. Men. I give up. This was a joke. I gave up if that's what I am. <laughs> there you have it. He said he wanted to be with the protesters, but I tell you, that's that Irish sense of humor. Let's keep going. Hey, let me tell you something quickly that our videographer, Efrain, mentioned to me. He looked at the crowd over there, he looked at the crowd over here, he looked at the police on both sides, and he made an observation. Uh, none of them are wearing masks. Now, our side, as in the freedom side, the conservative side, typically doesn't wear masks. But in Canada and in the United States, the left side, the progressive side, certainly the pro-Hamas side, they wear masks. It's very interesting and refreshing to me to be in a political culture where people own what they're saying. I disagree with the ideas on the other side, but I respect them insofar as they're willing to stand by their point of view. In North America, the left is too cowardly to own it, and they feel empowered when they're anonymous, and they actually commit vandalism, riot, and crime when they're hidden. I'll give him credit for that. Tell me what brought you out here today. Uh, <laughs> what's bringing, what brings people out over the world to protest against this monstrosity that's been unleashed upon us? You know, it's, 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 uh, it's plantation, a replantation. It's, it's, what, can, what can I say? It's, it's obscene. Well, I, I was thinking, uh, I mean, I don't know that much about Ireland. I'll be candid with you, Patty. But if I'm not mistaken, Ireland has never had an empire. It's never colonized exactly. another country. My point exactly. We've never gone, we've only done good in the world as far as I, sh I know, by sending out missionaries and so forth. Now, whether that's, you could say that maybe that's not too good. In the but sense. you didn't call, you didn't, you were not an imperial force. You're the indigenous people yes. of this island. Yes. yes, well, my family's been here about four generations, oh, no, four, about ten generations at least, you know. And uh, they're, they're just... What, what you see in, 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 with all these young men coming of a military age, that is a, an army in waiting. Where, during the, uh, the lockdowns, initial lockdowns, there was an Irish fellow on the WHO called Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan told us that they would have to go into everybody's house and take, if people were sick, take them out. And these people are here to do just that. Everybody in power in Ireland at the moment came through the Young Future Leaders uh, WHO, uh, not WHO, WEF school. And they were put in place strategically. And like you have your Trudeau or Turdo as you call them, which is, which I think is suitable. Yeah, exactly. And uh, then they have Macron and they, every place, every country in the world has got their little New World Order or uh, leader, let's say. So it's very, very hard for us to fight against that because they're in every position of power. And the, 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 the scam, the scamdemic that came out in 220 was a precursor. It was a Trojan horse for all this to happen. Soon, we won't have, we'll, have, we'll, we'll be a 50-50 in, in a few years' time. It, uh, the, the, there'll be more, for, nearly more foreigners than there are Irish. We took a break from filming because we sent the drone up. The reason we sent the drone up is we wanted to do a count. The reason we wanted to do a count is because we wanted to see, did this march against immigration in Dublin, Ireland, reflect a small niche, as the regime media would say, the far right? Or was it broader than that? Did it show a large cross-section of Irish, severely normal people, as I say, from different backgrounds? And as you'll see from the drone footage, which we'll post shortly, this is enormous. I, I'm not an expert at counting based on an uh, eye in the sky video. It just went on for blocks and blocks and blocks. And I gotta tell you, I've seen Irish flags everywhere I've gone. I didn't see any Irish flags with the counter protesters. And you know what, for someone who's seen a lot of flags lately, I'm glad I haven't seen a lot of Hamas flags here, not one, in fact. 
I think these are the best of the Irish. And the, the, what's so fascinating and frustrating to me is I don't think these folks have a political outlet. I mean, I, I'm not an expert in Ireland. I've just come here. This is the first time I've ever been here. I'm going home quickly. I wanted to see with my own eyes. I don't know if you can hear the energy level. These people, they're polite, but they're mad at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll stop walking backwards. It's that crowded a place. I want to go closer. I want to hear what they're saying. And I'm enjoying be, being surrounded by so many Irish flags. Wouldn't you be? Well, it's almost 5 p.m. We've been at the march for about three hours. A huge march. When you're in the middle of a march, you have no idea if it's 1,000 people or 15,000. We took some drone footage. I think it's definitely on the 15,000 side. And then there were some amazing speeches on the steps of this dominant facade, very impressive place, a place of, of uh, political action, I think. Now we're just hearing some politicians round out the event so people are leaving. And I bumped into one of my favorite journalists in Ireland. She works for Gripped.ie. You've seen her on my show. Fatima Gunning, it's a pleasure to see you in the flesh. Thank you. Welcome to Ireland. Thank you. It's been a very warm welcome. I've never been to this country before, but so many people have welcomed us. I guess they watch Rebel News, not particularly because they care about Canada, but they care about the themes we talk about. I think immigration is hotter in Ireland than it is in Canada. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the history of this nation, it, it isn't so long since we, we kicked out a colonial power in the form of the British. And now I think that, you know, from what I hear from people, you know, the Irish are feeling as though they're not in control of their own, you know, their, the borders certainly, but even politics more generally. And I think that there is a huge appetite for political change in this country. You know, I, I never thought of it that way, but I talked to a few folks here who use the language of the Irish being the indigenous people here. That's a powerful language around the world to kick out colonizers. But the Irish never colonized anyone. This is their home. And I, I think because the Irish are, are, are white, when they say things like Irish lives matter or Ireland is full, there's a progressive reflex to kick them and say you're racist. But I don't think we would say that to any other indigenous person around the world. We wouldn't say you're racist for wanting Italy to be Italian or France to be French or Russia to be Russian. Like I, I, I think it's been marginalized, but I think people here just want their country. And I don't even think that there's a zero immigration feeling here. I think people just say it's out of control. No one was asked. The way they're going about it is extreme. I don't know, help me understand. I've only been in, in Ireland for half a day, so I don't want to pretend that I know everything, but it, I'm, I'm trying to learn how, what, what do you think of what I've just said about the indigenous people and um, trying to maintain control of a homeland? Well, I, mean, I think you're, you're mostly spot on in that you know, Irish people you know, do have a strong sense of identity, or at least we would have until quite recently, where now a lot of things like Athena Swan, all those kind of like American um, you know, racism, well, I suppose some people might call it race baiting kind of stuff is coming in. Um, which nothing got to do with the history of Ireland. Like we never colonized anyone, as you said, never owned slaves, weren't involved in that whole um, debacle. And yet we're almost being treated as, as though we were. And I do think that the Irish as a people are a bit of a thorn in the side of people who would like to push that ideology because we can say like, hey, we were never part of that. Why are you, why are you kind of tarring us with the same brush? But be that as it may, yeah, I, I think that people are just, they're sick of hearing about you know thousands of people coming in with no identity documents i'm sure you you had to have a passport to get into ireland here this morning or whenever you came i have to have a passport if i want to go somewhere and i think that's all the irish people are really asking for is to know who is coming into the country you know and and even if ireland had a history of slavery and ireland did have a history of slavery there were slave ships that came to ireland to raid I learned that the town of Baltimore, the entire town was scooped up on pirate ships and, and sold as slaves. So the Irish have a history of being, of being slaves. But even if it were true, 
what does a, a historical act, action hundreds of years ago have to do with taking migrants in 2024 from Ukraine, from the Middle East, from whatever? Like it, 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 it just seems like it doesn't fit. It's not an excuse. I mean, I think, yeah, well, it's being it's being used as an excuse whether it has anything got to do with um, a nation's history or not. And, you know, I, I, I lived in Japan and Korea myself. Those countries are very, they have a very strong sense of who they are. I didn't feel that there was anything wrong with that when I was there. Um, so it is quite puzzling why people get offended and people do get offended when Irish people hold their flag and say that they want to be Irish and that they're proud of it. It seems like that's almost a dirty word these days and I don't really understand why. You know, I'm not Irish. I have no connection to Ireland in any way. But I felt a wonderful feeling of solidarity and family just walking with so many Irish and so many Irish flags. And I, I sort of missed that even though it wasn't mine. I admired it. Give me your thoughts on the whole day. You've been very generous with your time. You've briefed us via Skype before. Uh, you told me last week that you thought this would be a very large event, and it did turn out to be that. Do you think that? Do you think this will make a dent? Do you think this will move the needle? Or do you think this will just be demonized by the media, like RTE? Do you think they'll demonize it as far right? Like, will anything change? I'm impressed with what I saw, but will Ireland be any different after today? It's hard to say. I think that's up to the people. I mean, if, if the people are, are expressing that they want change, and it seems that huge numbers are, it's up to them really, isn't it? Like, I can only really speak about what I've observed um, reporting on this over the last two years. But um, there is huge anger out there. People are extremely angry about being called names like far right and racist when, you know, they want, you know, as you said earlier, that you don't think it's an anti-immigration sentiment. It isn't really an anti-immigration sentiment. It's a we are bursting at the seams sentiment. Yeah. It really feels that way. Well, listen, I want to compliment you and the whole team at Gript, G-R-I-P-T dot I-E. It's so refreshing. And watching people here come up to you and express to you their gratitude tells me that you are filling a very important information void. People trust you, and and I think you're building something very important. I've been a fan from afar, so congratulations to you and your journalism. Thank you very much. Right on. There you have it, Fatima Gunning from Gript.ie. following politics for 35 years and I've listened to maybe a thousand speeches I have to say your speech up there today was the most authentic passionate powerful and moving speech I can remember I it was astonishing to me who are you <laughs> who am I um it's odd to be asked that question but uh, I because I'm a very introverted sort of a person but because of what's happening in our country, I've had to come out and stand up 
My name is uh, Suzanne Delaney, and um, otherwise known as Susie D online, which makes me sound like a bad rap artist, but the name was picked because uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of targeting of you if you have the views I do in this country, and I was trying to protect my child, but um, I've decided to run for election, so I've put my name out there. Where, where are you from in Ireland? Um, I'm from Dublin, and um, I run the Irish Inquiry with my partner Stephen Kerr, and he's running for Castle Bar in Mayo. We're running as independent candidates because we don't want to be having to Is this to for town council or what level of politics? So it's local council, it's only once every five years, and then, but our, our aim is to get into the doll, into government. So that's what, what you would call your parliament? Yeah. When I say get into government, we wouldn't be, you know, in as a party, but we, we want to be in there because that's where you can make a bit of a difference. And I wish you good luck. I wish you all good luck because it was so, so powerful. But let's talk about what you said. You talked about your daughter, who's obviously young. And I think the most terrifying thing you said was that, in a way, you don't want her to grow up because you don't want her to go out because you're worried about her in the streets of Ireland. Tell me, tell me that again. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so... When I grew up, in, when I would have been, uh, when I was her age, I, uh, that was the 80s. And life was different here. And I used to play outside all day long. And if I grazed my knees and came back in, my mother would wipe my knees and she'd send me back out the door. And my daughter has never played outside alone. Never. And where I live, is, it's not, I'm, I'm not running where I live because where I live is gone. There's no In what way? Why, and why doesn't she play outside? Explain to me the missing piece of this story. Why? Um, it's not safe. Why is it not safe? So this year, er, sorry, this sorry, this week, um, a man, a, a foreign national who was led into the country um, without checks, tried to take a two-year-old child out of a buggy here, just up the road. Um, and a 12-year-old boy in County Cork um, was in the toilets and when he was coming back out he was pushed back into a cubicle and he was sexually assaulted and um, so that is what we're dealing with and three children were, were stabbed up the road here in Parnell Square and um, I don't feel at all like my daughter is safe and when people ask for her to go and do things with them like I have a friend who wanted to take her to a show I say no because I'm so afraid that there might be a terror attack or something else um, so where I live is not safe and I've spoken before uh, publicly about the fact that my daughter is the only Irish child in her class at school um, and I have nothing against these other children but that's not normal my, my daughter is the foreign national in her own country and she doesn't understand what her school friends say what language do they speak so they speak various languages uh, Slavic languages, um, you know, Pakistani, all sorts of languages. And uh, I've never had any, you know, they're just kids, you know. But it is a sign of the times and it's concerning to me. Um, I, I want my daughter to go to school and be happy. And she, you know, they had National Book Week here where they were encouraging children to read. And all of that week, every day, they had someone come in and read a story. And every day, the person who came in and read the story read it in a different language and not in English. So that is where I'm living and that is why I'm not running in my area because the people there won't vote for me. Um, and why did this change happen to Ireland? Well, I, I believe it's not just Ireland. It's a globalist agenda and the evidence is there if people care to look. It's not a... It's not a conspiracy theory, it's, it's a criminal conspiracy. And mass immigration is a part of that flooding, flooding Ireland with, like Irish people have a very, very strong sense of themselves and their identity. And you know, we have 800 years of oppression behind us in this country. And uh, I think they've come down particularly hard on this little country because uh, they know we're gonna fight back. We'll take so much until we won't. Well, let me ask you this, I mean, I've heard some slogans today, Ireland for the Irish, Irish Lives Matter, but your political class, I mean, there are some, some people who I guess you could call newcomers, but they're Irish. 
The people who made these decisions, are they not Irish? They are Irish. But the Irish Republicans, sorry, the IRA, excuse me, or the, you know, excuse me, Sinn Féin. I'm sorry, I'm from Canada. I don't know all these distinctions. But these people who, in my shallow knowledge of Ireland, are passionate Irish. You could call them even Irish chauvinists, Irish nationalists, whatever phrase you want to use. I mean, being Irish is the center of their identity. The, the 800 years you talk about, it's about being Irish. So how can people who fought to be Irish, who had a rebellion about being Irish, though I, I don't understand the troubles, but that was about Irishness. How can people who cared so much about being Irish then give it away? Because sure, I, I agree with you that there are globalist forces. We're familiar with those. But at the end of the day, it was Irish politicians who allowed it. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. Um, they're what we call a quizzling government. They're under the control of these people in the EU and beyond. Um, the UN is another one. And um, I think what happens is these people are, we say, uh, selected, not elected. We believe that our um, votes have been rigged here or that people have gotten in, you know, on the 10th or the 11th count of a vote. So they haven't been fairly elected and they're in, in my opinion, people who would never get to the top if it wasn't for the fact that they're doing what they're told to do. They're just self-serving people. I have a slightly different theory. I don't know about vote rigging in Ireland. I just don't know anything about that. I don't know about your voting systems. It sounds like there's a multiple transferable ballot, the way you described it. But I, my theory, and you tell me if I'm wrong, is that so far there's no party willing to embrace this issue. And, and so... Even if people wanted to vote against this, they don't have an option. All the parties that have a likelihood of election are unified in terms of open borders. That's my theory. So I, I wouldn't, again, I don't know about the vote rigging here. I just don't know. But you don't need vote rigging if every party on the ballot has the same view on immigration. Yeah, it's a uni-party system here. There's the appearance of opposition, but... Even over the last few months, that appearance has slipped away. Uh, you asked me about Sinn Féin, and that would have been the alternative party for people to vote for. Um, but people have lost their faith in Sinn Féin. They're not the Republicans that they have built their reputation on, and they're completely for open borders. So there isn't really, you're right, there isn't really another party to, to vote for, but there's new parties springing up, and lots of independent candidates. And um, I think if people actually, people are disillusioned, so a lot of people aren't even registered to vote, particularly in working class areas. But the people in the working class areas need to get out and vote. They really do, because they're not putting these unvetted, undocumented migrants into the affluent communities. They're putting them into my community. Um, they say they care about migrants, but why, why don't they take them in? Two more questions. Today's march was very large. At least I was surprised. And I would say it was a working class crowd, but there were people here from all walks of life. I thought, I mean, there's that Irish uh, proclivity to use colorful language, but I would call the, the crowd very well behaved. Um, what will come of this large march? Uh, do you think anything will change because of it? Uh, I mean, you know, it's great to see people out, but we do need... It was a huge march, and when RTE reports it on the news, they'll say there was 200 people here. That's and, your state broadcaster. Yeah, and they will try to get their headlines. The last time there was a march, there was absolutely no trouble, but a few protesters went off home, and they were entrapped by the Gardaí or the police um, in order that they, they... They trapped them in a corner of the street and asked them to leave, but they couldn't leave, so they arrested them for that. Um, I saw no misbehavior and I mean I've, I've been looking for three hours I haven't seen a single thing you'll see the misbehavior from the radical leftists that were around the corner a small number of them but you know they are they were surrounded by police I don't know if you noticed that but that's not because of us that's because of them they are we've had someone drive through a crowd here and hit, hit people in a car and he was a radical leftist and nothing ever happens to them you know but we get called out for We've, we've been remarkably peaceful. Last question. I, um, you've mentioned RTE. 
and I know the mainstream media or the regime media here is is very is, it's a clique, and they share the same views. That said, I probably saw twenty people live streaming or filming today, and I don't mean just holding their cell phone up. I mean having like a bit of a rig, like a like a more than just a selfie stick. Like they look like serious live streamers, and I thought to myself. It looks like there's a bit of an independent citizen journalist movement in Ireland. I respect Gripped.ie. They, they actually have some credentials and accreditation. But I'm talking about there must, be, there must have been at least 10. I would call them serious live streamers here. What is the independent citizen journalist scene like here in, in Ireland? Oh, it's really after growing. Uh, over the past couple of years. Like are you, I, I, th- I think you told me that you're in journalism as well? Yes, yeah, so um, with my partner, uh, Stephen Kerr, um, we have the platform, The Irish Inquiry, which would be quite well known here. And there's lots of really good independent journalists like Philip Dwyer and other people like that. It's really a growing movement, I have to say. Um, the, the mainstream media would have been here today, but they'll hide and then they will try to report something negative. Well, I want to say your speech today was amazing, and we're going to put some excerpts of it up, and I wish you good luck, and I wish that your your daughter remains safe, and I wish that Ireland remains free. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. There you have it. For more from our trip to Dublin, go to migrantreports.com.